The simplest buffer configuration will look something like this. A transistor is powered by a power supply with a voltage of VCC. At the base of the transistor will be the signal that needs to be buffered, called VIN. At the emitter of the transistor is a resistor placed to ground. The buffered signal will appear across the resistor as Vout. To find out what the value of Vout is, we will do a KVL at the input voltage. All the voltages in the loop have to be equal to zero. This results in V in minus VBE minus V out equals zero volts. Rearranging the formula tells us that the output voltage is equal to the input voltage minus the base emitter voltage. VBE is the voltage drop from the base to emitter and is usually 700 millivolts for a silicon transistor. It's visible how the output voltage is always 700 millivolts lower than the input voltage. This makes the gain of the circuit to be a little less than one for DC signals. So let's test the circuit with some different input voltages. If we ground the input, the formula tells us that the output voltage is negative 700 millivolts. But this is impossible, because the lowest voltage in the circuit is zero volts. So the output voltage will be limited to zero volts. If you put one volts at the input, we get 300 millivolts at the output. If you put two volts, we get 1.3 volts. 5 volts gives us 4.3 volts, and 10 volts should give us 9.3 volts, but 9 volt is our upper limit, so it will be limited to 9 volts. This also gives us the condition for the input voltage of a buffer. This is all good for DC input signals, but buffers are more often used with AC signals, like audio. Because the negative cycle of the AC is lower than 0 volts, we need to add a DC offset so the buffer can process the signal without distortion. This is called biasing the transistor. We do this by adding C1 to capacitively couple the AC to the DC offset created by R2 and R3. The capacitor makes sure that the node at R2 and R3 can have a different DC level than the signal source. Usually we want the bias voltage to be about half the supply voltage, so the signal has optimal headroom. To achieve this, both R2 and R3 has to have the same value. So let's design a buffer for audio. At the input we want a high impedance to make sure that the audio source does not get loaded. The input impedance of this buffer is given as the resistance of R2 parallel to R3 parallel to the resistance looking into the base of the transistor. The resistance looking into the base of the transistor is approximately the beta of the transistor times the value of R1. The beta factor can be found in a datasheet or by using a multimeter but for now we assume it to be 100. The value for R1 should be chosen so the transistor will not burn out while conducting. A standard value of 10k ohms will do, but you can also go lower depending on the transistor. This will result into an input resistance of 1 mega ohm. The value of R2 and R3 has to be chosen so the quiescent current isn't too large, but the resistance isn't too high. 100k ohm is an alright value. The resulting input impedance is now about 48,000 ohms. Now C1 and a parallel combination of R2 and R3 form a high pass filter. We want to choose the value of C1 so the cutoff frequency is outside the audio range. The formula for the cutoff frequency is 1 over 2 pi times R2 parallel to R3 times C1. R2 parallel to R3 is 50k ohms, and we want the cutoff frequency to be lower than 20 Hz. If we rewrite the formula to calculate for C1, we get a value of 159 nF, but a higher value will work too. The output impedance of this circuit is approximately R1 in parallel to R2 in parallel with R3 divided by the beta. This results in an output impedance of around 476 ohms. The signal at Vout still has a DC offset of 4.5 volts minus 700 millivolts. In audio we want to pass signals without a DC offset, so a simple high pass filter will do that for us. Before we can pick a capacitor value, we need to predict the size of the load. This might be the input impedance of the next circuit, or this is a resistor we place ourselves. We calculated the output impedance to be 476 ohms. Our rule of thumb is to expect the load resistor to be at least 10 times bigger. In this case, this will roughly be a 4.7k ohm resistor. Now we can choose a value for C2. Using the formula to calculate the capacitor value again, gives us a capacity of about 1.7 microfarads. 
Now we calculated everything there is and our circuit is ready to use. As a recap, I put all parameters of this buffer together in a table. The input voltage range is 0.7 volts up to VCC plus 0.7 volts due to the base emitter voltage. The gain is approximately 1 for DC signals and 1 for AC signals. The input impedance is about 48k ohms and the output impedance is 417 ohms with load and 476 without. And we designed the circuit to have an approximate bandwidth starting at 20 Hz. But we didn't add any low pass filtering, so the circuit will buffer signals outside the audio spectrum too. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. More content regarding transistors and our Lunetta project will follow soon.